Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today, I decided to mod a budget or off-the-shelf, more affordable keyboard. If you guys have been watching my channel for a while. You know that I like to review Red Dragon boards. They appreciate the work that I put into the videos. And Red Dragon actually appreciates my honesty. I've seen some of my feedback come to life. I think it's a win-win situation for everybody. We're getting better products out of Red Dragon, and you know they're getting to learn what customers are actually looking for. Today, I'm going to be modding a keyboard. It is in kind of a transition phase because Red Dragon, for many years, um, well, most of their boards were soldered. They did have some hot swap boards available, but they were using the Otemu Milmax hot swap sockets, which only work with a handful of switches. They started releasing, I wanna say, early to mid 2022, new five pin hot swap compatibles. Now they were not using your standard Kale, Gatoron, TTC hot swap sockets, but they actually had two little boxes soldered on the back of the PCB, um, as we see in this one. This one, was released before they started to add more padding and choose different plate options. It still had the steel plate as well as no dampening whatsoever. Now this is the, the way that it looks now as I've reached it. I did actually pan on, plan on painting it, but my indoor paint box needs some maintenance because I haven't really used it since uh, uh, last year. So I'm gonna have to do some work for that so really the only cosmetic thing I did was remove the logo I started and I wanted to go through all the different stages of modding and show how little or how much each modification or change to the keyboard actually does using first all the stock parts and then once I used all the stock parts I started switching out um, switches and keycaps so that you guys could hear the difference with this keyboard here today, I started off by first just lubing the brown switches that it comes preloaded with. Now, I'm pretty sure these are Otemu switches, but I'm not certain. I don't know the manufacturer that Red Dragon uses. They could be Royal Clutch, but I don't know. They're fairly standard brown switches, though once I lubed the back of the leaf spring as well as the uh, spring itself, with a mix of Molly Coat and PAO, they actually sounded and felt quite decent. Um, not perfect, not something I would actually buy, but since I already had them, I went ahead and lubed them up and then did a sound test. When I first applied the PE foam mod, I was like, now this is a pretty good mod. I think I'm going to continue to use it. The problem with that is, is that PE foam comes from numerous different thicknesses and densities. And I, my rule of thumb with PE foam is stick your hand underneath it. If you can still see your hand, it should be safe. If it's any thicker, you got to worry about not only it bending pins on the switches, but actually going into the hot swap socket and preventing a good connection, making the switch work sometimes and not work other times. Um, also, because of the different thickness, sometimes it'll bunch up a little bit, so you'll have a little bit of a fold under one switch, but a completely flat under another, so one switch sounds extra loud and poppy, while the other one just sounds a little poppy. Um, so I have found that, you know, unless I don't have any switch pads around, but I kind of bought a whole bunch, so I think I'll be good for a minute. Um, that I will use PE foam, but if I have a choice, I would rather use switch pads as I feel it provides more uniformity of not only sound and feel, but I think it just looks better on the board. Plus you're not having to, you know, mess about with this very fragile sheet 
of PE foam anytime that you're opening up the keyboard. So anyway, I went ahead and did the switch pads. These are poron switch pads, though I find them all to be not the same, but somewhat similar. Anyway, I went ahead and did a sound test with the lube switches and now with the switch pads added. So after lubing the switches and adding the pads, what's the next logical mod to do? Well, in my mind, that's always the Tempest Tape mod. I like the Tempest Tape as it acts as a low pass filter, or at least that's what I do find that it seems to capture some of the higher pitch tones um, and allow some of the deeper tones to kind of bounce back at you. So here I did three layers, two horizontal, one vertical, um, making sure to cut out for the, where the studs go, because this is a tray mount board, as well as for the JST connector for the 3000 milliamp hour battery. Once I completed the Tempest tape mod, guess what? I did another sound test. I wanted to do silicone pour into this keyboard, but because of the battery and because of the switches, I felt that I was going to have to tape off too much stuff. And there just isn't that much space in there to begin with. As felt as, as case foam, I went ahead and did another sound test. Anyway, so at this point, I was like, all right, I've gotten some of the most, you know, common mods done. Obviously, lubing the switches being one of the most important ones if you don't have pre lube switches. So I decided, let me start moving things around. So I decided to do a sound test, first replacing the switches out, but keeping the OEM keycaps. And I replaced the switches from the RK or from the Red Dragon Browns to the Princess Tactile 60 gram switches and did a sound test with that. After switching those out, I actually put the red the I put back the red dragon browns into the board and loaded up a different set of keys now these are double shot abs um, they're part of adult set but they're they come across like four different boxes so I you're supposed to mix and match I just use the individual box but it's a double shot cherry uh, 1.5 millimeter in thickness body but I did the sound test like I said keeping the lube Red Dragon Brown switches. So after doing that, I figured, all right, time to move on from the switches and keycaps. And I went ahead and did a sound test with just the Princess tactile switches, as well as the Double Shot Cherry ABS keycaps. So after doing that, I decided, let me try some different switches. The Browns are tactile, the Princess are tactile. Let me try a known switch that everybody knows, a nice creamy switch. So I went, I went ahead and loaded up a set of Gatoron Milky Yellows um, onto the board. And I went ahead and used the same Dolch keycap set, recorded a sound test. Although I'm doing only small clips of the sound test here um, so that you can listen to hear the differences, I will be doing a supercut of the sound test, which is just one short clip from each sound test at the end of this video. But in the description, there will be a link to the full sound test for each one of these modifications in case you want to compare one to another. So after doing a sound test with the cherry keycaps and the milky yellows, I decided, mm, let me switch things up again so at this point i decided to go with instead of double shot keys die sub some people prefer the sound of die sub pbt some people prefer the sound of double shot pbt some people prefer abs i kind of like each keycap differently but i went ahead and picked a set of milk and honey uh, which were 1.5 millimeter in thickness, die sub XDA keycap. So we've got that uniform profile. And I went ahead and did a sound test with those and the Gatoron Milky Yellows.
So after doing the XDA keycaps, I, I was wondering what would this sound like if I put in a taller keycap set, SA. Now, obviously we had the OEM, you know, that were preloaded, but those were only 0.9 millimeter. The SA keycaps I have are 1.5 millimeter. And though they're both ABS, I think that these are going to sound a little bit better. And I, I think I was right. So I went ahead and loaded a set of carbon SA double shot ABS keycaps on there with the milkies and did a sound test. So with the sound test using the milky yellow, it gave me an idea after hearing how this sounded with the milky yellows and the SA keycaps, I thought maybe some U4TXs will really bring a new level of sound to this keyboard. So I went ahead and loaded those up and did a sound test. Wow, now that was crunchy. Now, honestly, if I close my eyes and try to just listen to the keyboard, it definitely does not sound like a Red Dragon keyboard. To me, or to my ears, it sounds like a pricier keyboard, but obviously we've put our time and effort into it. So to close out everything, I wanted to go ahead and just do one more thing that I didn't do. I have, as of lately, been actually taking out the plate, the PCB uh, foam, if it has any uh, on any of the keyboards I buy. Because I do like that it gives a bit more of a thud or even a, a deep echo. It, it helps to reach more of that thocky sound. But when using plate PCB dampener, I find that it doesn't mute it, but it gives it a softer tone. So I was kind of aiming more for creamy, though I don't think I quite reached it, though it definitely is a different sound profile. I went ahead and used a, um, this is adhesive neoprene. I used the ad adhesive side, stuck it to the plate, and then used an X-Acto knife to cut out the holes for stabilizers and the key switches. Once I did that, I went ahead and reassembled it. Instead of using the milky yellows, I had noticed I had some milky top yellows, uh, the black bottom milky top yellows. I've had them for a while and I hadn't used them. And I was like, yeah, let's give these a shot. And I actually think that they worked a little bit better anyway with this combination. So the last and the final sound test in this video has basically all of the mods. And I loaded them up with a set of double shot PBT. Now that's what it says on the listing. And it kind of feels like it too. Uh, but there's some Sumson or Glyn brand double shot PBT Dark Olivia. And that's where I left it at last. Now, I did want to come to these keys eventually, but again, like I said, I wanted to paint it. But I'm going to have to come back to that at some other time. For right now, here's a quick sound test of the fully modded keyboard with the Gateron Milky Yellow Tops and the double shot PBT key. So today we took this Red Dragon K530 Pro. Um, some would consider this a budget board. Uh, I have seen these on sale for as low as like $30. This is a keyboard that I think is a good starter board to practice on, to learn. Um, you have to be very careful when inserting and removing because of the two tiny switches that control both of the... Uh, Turning, turning it on and off and selecting 2.4 of the Bluetooth device slots. And if you get that wrong, well, you're going to miss that switch. But with a little bit of time and effort, I mean, granted, I've been filming and going back and forth, so this probably took me a little bit longer. I could have probably accomplished this within a couple of hours. And I'm honestly quite happy. It feels a lot more substantial and solid, and I think it sounds much better than it did stock by a mile. I think that we will show that just lubing the switches, um, tuning the stabilizers, or just making them a little bit tighter, and maybe adding the switch pad, they do make a difference to some of these pre-built keyboards. Sometimes you don't have to put as much of an effort or as, as much time as you may think into making a keyboard 
maybe not sound like the best, but definitely sound much better than it does now. Anyway, I hope that today um, I've shared some things. Perhaps you learned something. Perhaps I left you with more questions. If you have more questions, feel free to throw them down in the comments below or come on over to Budget Keebs and throw a question in our weekly thread. Or you can hit our Discord and just tag me directly or ask a question on our questions channel and I'll do what I can to help you through your modification. I'd like to hear about your modded keyboards and your experience, especially with Red Dragon, but any other brand. I'd like to hear what you guys have done to mod your keyboards and what mod you like. What are the mods that you apply to almost, if not every, keyboard that you modify? I'd love to hear about them. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.